Welcome back to another episode of Producer Ground Podcast. Carrington with me. What's good? Pretty excited about this podcast. We got uh, the produ- one of the produ- this producer here was at the forefront of the online beat and kit stores. He's worked with Kit Wiz Khalifa, Jim Jones, Roscoe Dash, Ray J, MTV, and much more. Please welcome to the show, super, superstar. Oh, <laughs> what's good? What's Appreciate good? you pulling up, bro. Yes, sir. No problem. No problem. So, you know, those that, uh, you know, aren't too familiar with uh, your come up, tell us a little bit about, you know, what was going on in your life, you know, before, you know, uh, you know, really your success and, you know, the, your pathway to success. Um, well, I started off as an artist, actually, uh, way back. Like, I'm talking like, man, middle school days. That's how I got into music was as an artist. Um, and I was good at it, you know, at writing and doing everything around my city. But then after after some time went on, I just kind of noticed that that wasn't the lifestyle that I kind of wanted. I kind of like more of the behind the scenes, like, mm. you know what I mean? Like people know them, but not like you can't walk through the mall mm. unless people, you know, like it's a big artist. And then two, seeing like, well, where I'm from, there ain't no music scene. So and mm. I had never even traveled yet. So I was like. It would be, and I kind of fell in love with beats because I was watching the, the person that was making my beats. And I was like, dang, you, you should do this here. Like, move that there. Do this, do that. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, damn, like, yo, that's a good ass <laughs> idea. Like, you you, well, you might as well just try to make your own beats. And I mm-hmm. was like, all right. Like, so I just started kind of, We he was in college. Like, he'd be in his dorm. They'd go out, you know, mess around with chicks or party and all that. And I'd just be in the studio in his, well, in his dorm, just using his equipment. Um. And then from there, like, I would just, like, sell beats locally to, like, help my mom pay bills, you know, pay mm-hmm. electric bill or something, like, sell little bundles. Like, not a lot of money, but enough mm-hmm. to, like, pay some little bills. Um, then from there, uh, I ended up getting my first, like, own equipment, just, like, a little computer, you know, little stuff. Jumped on, like, MySpace with it in, like, 2010 or so. Um, was slanging them, trapping on MySpace for real. Um, mm-hmm. And from there, I saved up probably, like, seven grand or something went and got my first like apartment that was outside of the hood because i was always in the projects or in the hood the human rights was crazy <laughs> <laughs> so we got got my first place um from saved up moved me and my mom there and then from there it's just been a level up like it's just been a grind like from there i went from that apartment kept going went to a townhouse that was right across from there then i went from there to a condo then i went from there to the house i got mm. and of course in between that just just grinding you know what i mean like going hard I, I was really heavy for the most part through the whole thing online like you know with like my bro like with vibe and stuff like right, we didn't right. really care too much about the industry stuff because we're like bro we're making like crazy money online we don't even care about all that and but then in the past like since this year i haven't really released nothing online um because now i'm at a point where it's more about the music for me like mm-hmm. it's more about you know, I've come so far to where and I've had investments and been smart with things to where I don't really need that online beat money as, as much. So I, I'm willing to take that sacrifice from that and get more in the industry, because for me right now, it's just more about the music and about like making music history. You know what I mean? Getting them plaques, like getting them placements. So that's where I'm at right now. So were you like um, when? So what time frame was this all happening for you? You said like college time? Um, mm, I was about. 20 when 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 I when the very beginning when I said like now I was like 19 like when I first started in the dorms with my with dude and then at like 20 is when I was still in the hood but I had my first little equipment at 21 I had my first apartment that was out like kind of some suburbs at about 22 I had moved to the townhouse at about 25 I had moved to this condo and then at 27 26 to 27 or so I got my house and then been there since and then now I'm planning to move to Atlanta sell my house and get a different house here and move to Atlanta so before so when you were younger was pursuing like being an artist or a producer or even a goal or even a thought or uh it was like more of like a dream you know what I mean like I didn't like to be an artist I didn't mm. even think about beats you know I was just I wanted to be a rapper I wanted to be a popular rapper you know what I'm saying like a lot of people but I wasn't like in that mindset thinking like, yo, this is possible. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I really want to do it. I was just like writing, coming up with songs, locally recording, like, you know what I'm saying? And then honestly, it was, like I said, I fell into love with the beats from watching my producer mess with stuff and seeing the creativity behind it. But then also when I first heard like the runners, like when I first heard every day I'm hustling mm-hmm. and like money on my mind, mm-hmm. I was just like, bruh, never heard nothing like that before. Like, 
I don't like they just inspired me as the runners to be like, I was like, yo, what is this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to do this. Like, I don't even care like about that, about the beats. I mean, mm-hmm. about the the rapping part. Like, I I want to make these beats because this is this sounds so cool to be able to put stuff because before then beats were real simple. And I when I, I could always hear how stuff was put together even though I, I, you know what I mean? I, I didn't have any training in it. Mm-hmm. So, but when I heard real beats like that, that were like orchestrated and like, you know, had these dope sounds going on and Very everything full. moving. Yeah. And I was just like, whoa, like yeah. I didn't even know this is something new. Like I didn't want to make little, you know, little stupid little beats that people were doing back then. I wanted to, if I was going to do, I wanted to make some real, you know, some real shit. And that inspired me. Um, and it was crazy then. Cause then like, after like, maybe like six years or something in, I ended up like actually getting in contact with the runners and they were like, yo, you killing the game. Like they was wanting to do some like ghost stuff, all type of stuff. So like to, to, for them to even start my thing and then to have them be acknowledge who you even right. are and be like, yo, you killing it. I'm like, damn, that was crazy. So when you started, uh, when you first were like, I think I'm gonna try to sell some beats online. How long did it take you before you really started making a little bit of money? Uh, So with me, like I said, I was like, so I was, I started, trapping them things off MySpace, but it took like, it didn't take too long for real because I, I'm always like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to just go all in, go crazy with it. So I say I was putting beats on there and I was also like spamming all type of people. Mm-hmm. This, this was before spam was even a thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like now everybody knows what that is and you could copy, paste, match. Back then people didn't even know to even think to do that. Like mm-hmm. I was doing all that. And getting replies. And back then, you didn't really have many people saying, like, yo, I, I sell beats. You a rapper. I got beats for you. So people would be like, yo, like, if somebody got a message from somebody saying they made beats, they would probably buy something from you because there ain't that many people selling beats, you know, or making them. They mm-hmm. don't know that many people. So honestly, it was almost instantly when I started really going hard with it on my – and then from there, uh, I just when I linked up with Johnny Giuliano. And he mm-hmm. hit me up like, yo – um, did you make this uh, shit for Jim Jones? Cause that was my first placement. I was like, yeah, I sent him some beats, but I don't know if they did them. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, what you mean? It's on BET, bro. It's a music video on BET. Damn. I have cable. <laughs> I'm in the hood. I ain't got cable. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> so <Historic>. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, what you mean? He's like, he's like, bro, I knew it was you. Like we didn't know each other as much, but he was like, I'm familiar with your beat tag. Like, I've been, I've been peeping you. You know what I'm saying? We had talked a couple of times, but not really. Um, I had just like messaged him, told him I, you know, I, I fuck with his stuff and vice versa. And he was like, bro, I heard your tag. Like it cussed and everything. Cause back then my tag was like, uh, uh, what, what was my tag? Uh, I don't know, but it cussed or whatever. And they didn't skip it or nothing. He was like, bro, you made it. And you like, you made this beat that was on, uh, it just premiered on, you know, whatever. So then from there, he was like, man, you might as well come over to this sound click game. Like, I was about to ask this you. is where, you know, you, I know you, you, I know you getting, you know, you're saying you're doing all right on, on this MySpace stuff. And he was like, you know, I'd be getting some sales on MySpace too, but you could really shine, I think, if you came over here to sound click, because that's where it's at. So I was like, all right, I mean, I ain't going to turn it down. Like, mm-hmm. what's the point? Might as well. Let's see what, let's see what it does. So yeah. he told me, like, just upload your stuff and go hard and, and, you know, do, buy some like sound click promo every now and then, try to get up in the charts, try to get your name out there a little bit. Boy, and it was like not much longer after I was one of the top top ten people in there. You know what I mean? For some years, while I was in the golden golden years, anyway, for SoundClick. Mm-hmm. Was there much money that you put into promo? Um, yeah, I mean, it cost it for sure, but not after it was in the beginning. Like, because back then with that, it was more so like, say you spent fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, it would put you in a top ten if you had a dope beat. Yeah, you know what I mean. But then if you were also already dope, like if you were really dope and you had other dope stuff you know, then it was all natural. It was real stats. So it was like, you would stay up there. You know what I mean? Because people would be on your shit. Mm-hmm. And then if you fall, like you had so many new people. So you upload new stuff. You wouldn't even, I didn't even need promo no more. Like I would mm-hmm. just, anytime I dropped something, it would go top 10 period. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, and it was like, it was like an artist dropping like a mixtape or something. It was yeah. like, you would drop a beat and it would just be like, a hundred leases coming through. Yeah. Like people just going ham. Like they yeah. waiting on you to drop beats. Like it was, they just waiting on you. So right. as many beats as you can crank out, if they dope, they gonna buy them. It was, but then they fucked up the game when they started. Can you cuss on here? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> when they um, <laughs> I don't want to you. Know what I'm saying? Like, be on the podcast and be bleep, bleep, like that. I'll just be cussing on shit. Um, when they start like 
getting SoundClick got too like money hungry and started like making it to where you had to buy promo to be up mm-hmm. there or that was the only way. So then it was a bunch of like trash people up there, honestly. And then um, the cheating came in where people could cheat to be up there. So it was like that? through like uh, it was um, what's that place called? Beat uh, Brokers. They would do a little thing where you would buy promotion through them. And it was technically supposed to not be cheating, but it was. They were funneling. I don't know what they were doing, but they would get you in the top, basically. Yeah. And it was just so, and it was other ways. People was using bots, all type of, it was just so crazy. Just corrupt. like it is now with Instagram and everything. Yeah. It was just so fake. Everything was so fake. So it was like, couldn't even compete. It was even if, like, it was a bunch of trash up there. And so what would happen would be like everybody, all the customers that would, would relied on SoundClick for Beats would come to there and be like, okay, well, let's see what O got, what Vibe got, what Johnny got, what whoever else got. And they wouldn't see us. And mm. we would get emails like, yo, I see you left the game, you know? So that was just people that would say it. But most other people, they're not going to bother to send an email. They just moved on. So then SoundClick died because they killed themselves for real. So what was your next progression, you know, after? Well, luckily, before they died... I looked into the future and was like, I don't want to rely on this website. Like we always talk about it. Like, you know, what if he be like, what if something happened to them? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that ain't my site. Like, what if they just decided to sell? What if they just hit a button? Then mm-hmm. all my income would be gone. So before that happened, I had already started my own superstarro.com website. What well, was superstarro beats then? A whole different website. But I was already directing traffic there. And I'm like, yo, um, you know, everybody, you know, sending out to all my customers all the time, letting them know, like, this is where I'm going to be. So even after that died, they already, they would just come my way already anyway. Yeah. And that so, was on my, on my flash store? No, that was all just strictly, um, just my own site. It didn't have nothing. It didn't, it had its own player integrated oh, wow. and all that stuff. Yeah. And then after, after that, I teamed up with my flash store and built a whole different website for, for it to be more simple. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So you're actually affiliated with my flash store then on the business side? Uh, somewhat as kind of like a sponsorship type thing, but not okay. like in a, you know, like a, I don't own any percentage or nothing like that, but kind of like as a sponsorship type thing. Yeah. 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 So That's what great. are some of the things that you're doing now in 2018, um, that are different from back then? Cause I mean, you have your own website now. So how are you getting your name out and promoting that? Well, for, for now, like the game is so different now. And like I said, I'm not even like, I don't even sell beats online no more. Like you can't, like I had people hit me all the time. Well, unless it's beats that's already on like on superstar.com, but I don't update it. Like, cause I'm just like, not even like focus on that at all. But as far as, um, in general, like to get out there and everything back then, like I said, SoundClick was just like, it was a golden era. Like you mm-hmm. didn't have the, she was popping on there and it was good. But now it's like, it's better actually now though, because it's more of like, you have to brand yourself and you can just utilize social media. I mean, that's what I do. Like if you look at my Instagram, it's my Instagram for real. That's what, that's what everything I funnel everything for that. Like Mm -hmm. Instagram is where I'm at, where I'm at with everything. Like I love Instagram so much. Like if you are smart with marketing and your image and cause even though I'm a producer, not an artist, all that stuff matters. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you smart with it, you know what I mean? And you a hustler and you grind, that's you. And you smart with, videos pictures all that stuff like you putting out dope stuff Mm -hmm. then and and you you know putting back in behind it if you got to put some promotion or if you got to whatever you got to do to 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 get it going up that's what i focus on mainly now social media marketing that's one of the questions that we were um talking about is how important just your brand image yourself is because we have a lot of producers who have five beats and everything but their image doesn't match their beats and so hearing you say that does emphasize like how important it is yeah um i mean i would say like so I don't want to say like, okay, yeah, your image, you know, means everything. Cause right. it don't like, I mean, if you got, if you got heat, you got heat and you know, you could stumble, we could be in this room, who knows could come in this building and be like, oh, you could, you know, I could play a beat and I could just not have no image and they'd be they'd still mess with me. But the image does mean a lot for just the, if you really want, if you're trying to brand yourself right. and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get it. Like I ain't just hoping somebody stumbles across me. Like I'm going to push my way through here and make something happen. Like, no matter if you're an artist, a producer, a, a painter, mm-hmm. a freaking whatever, anything, like people just connect more, you know what I mean, right. with it. Like, you know what I mean? No matter if it's like the weirdest, craziest like image, you know, or whatever, all anything works nowadays. I mean, just look at the game, like look at who, people that are running the game right now, all right. that like image means everything. You hear about people getting signed strictly off their image. They don't right. even hear the music yet mm-hmm. because the image means so much like. Even if you're not, a, even if you're not the right ra- a rapper, it means a lot for real. What's the best advice you could give an upcoming producer on you know branding and building your image? Um, I would for one say like 
to be yourself though. You know what I mean? Like, don't ever feel like you gotta like do something just cause that's what's like, you don't gotta, if you don't wanna color your hair some crazy shit and be on some crazy, you know, all that, then you don't got to. But right. if that's you, cool. Like kinda every, I feel like everybody has an image. Everybody has some drip and some style in them. You just kinda gotta find it. You know right. what I mean? Like just take some time to figure out what you like, you know, and put stuff together. And then once you kinda got yourself, you know what I mean? Like, okay, this is how I wanna portray myself like or not portray because you want to be you but right. you know you got to have a plan like this is going to be me this is what I'm all about this is what I want people to know about me this is what you know what I mean like like me I'm like people know about me from being very motivational spreading the light right. like you know this is what I'm about you know what I mean somebody else might be about whatever you know what I mean once you got that 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 game plan down then you got to figure out um, what you want to target the most, like, cause you want to mainly focus on, you can do a lot of, of course you want to have everything. You want to have Twitter, you want to have Instagram, you want to have all, everything you can have, but you want to mainly focus on one the most cause you want to build, you know what I mean? So for me, it's Instagram. I feel like Instagram is what everybody should be focusing on, honestly. Yeah. Um, but then after that, you just got to go crazy with it. I mean, you got to like link up with a photographer, videographers, whatever you got to do, make yourself got to be professional. It's got to look good. You know, you got to look the part too. everything got to you can't because when you're doing social media too, the way everything looks means so much. Like I have artists hit me up all the time and they'll be like, check out this song, bro. It's really dope. And I'll check it out and it will be really dope. And I'll be like, yo, you know, it, it just happened actually a couple of days ago. Again, this dude was super dope. But mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, his Instagram, though, is like trash. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you got pictures up here of like doing some trash stuff i'm like <laughs> like it'd be like some pointless stuff like cup of like this water cup like bro like you you got some heat and he kind of had a little image but i'm like yo you need to tweak the image a little bit you know what i mean and you need to take all this stuff down from your instagram and go do professional stuff i mean not saying everything has to be like a magazine cover right. picture but it got to be of quality it got to fit in there like yeah. well, somebody got to go to your instagram and be looking and be like damn dope i'm gonna follow this motherfucker right. you know what i'm that's saying your portfolio. like yeah that's your, exactly that's that's y y your whole marketing thing that's you right there so um that happens all the time Just actually in my like i got like a little vip producer gang thing and that was a couple months ago for for one thing I, that's what i told them i told everybody like uh send me a link to your instagram you know what i mean and i'll tell you you know what you should delete you know what i mm. mean and edit help you edit some stuff up because mm. that stuff really means that's a, lot. a real dope service yeah right when, when did you, or you can go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, um, because you said you you actually checked out a message that someone sent you, you know, yeah. a spam, quote unquote spam message. Yeah. Now, how I, I kind of feel a certain way about like, you know, that type of thing, like reaching out like, hey, bro, check my music. Because a lot yeah. of times it comes across as like looking for a handout, looking yep. for someone to save them, save their life kind of thing, you know yep. what I mean, to put them on. How often do you listen to links that people send you and what's your, you know, take on, you know, basically sending out links? Um, I mean, for me, I, I check up, I check a lot of the stuff I get, you know what I mean? Like, but if I can kind of look and see, cause I'm in the game too. So I can kind of tell if it's some stuff that they just tried to paste to a bunch of people mm. or if it's something genuine mm. and they really trying to reach out. If it looked like it's something, I just decline. I don't even look at it. Cause mm. I ain't got time for that spam stuff. <laughs> right, right. But if it's, if it's something where I feel like, yo, this is somebody that's really personally trying to reach out to me, then I'll click on a page. And if I, and if from when I click, when I click on a page, if it's like, like I said, it might keep me going. You know what I mean? And I'll be like, okay, let me look. You know what I mean? They kind of think, looks like they know what they're doing a little bit and I'll listen around, you know what I mean? But, um, so I don't, I don't really know how, how often, but pretty often, but like I said, but more, more often when I do do it, it be, kind of becomes nothing because I'll look at it. And like I said, it'll be, it, it, you, you haven't, you shouldn't reach out to nobody and be doing none of that until your stuff is like looking good too. Mm -hmm. Cause like, like that, that, that's from experience. Like I'll come look at somebody's stuff. Like, okay, let me check you out. And it'll be like, I don't even want to hear, dude. Like, I, I can tell from, you know, like, he don't, he got, still got a lot of stuff to go on. A lot to, of growth, do. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like, this, you don't need to be sending messages out right now. <laughs> not just nah, to be for real, real you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta get your, you know, not like you gotta be on top of the world right, before right. you send out messages, but you wanna, you Tighten wanna, up. like, when you go to a job interview, you dress up, you know, you like, okay, cool, I'm gonna clean up. Like, right. Yeah, hey, I would like this job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you you can't like just be like hitting up people like hey come check out mom even if it's not nobody that's in the music and anybody even fans like you're trying to get fans especially fans like fans are going to buy into it even more like they need to 
they're gonna look at dude like, man, what's this fool? I ain't looking reading. Like, you know, I'm not listening to this shit. Like nowadays, people become fans of you, then fans of your music. Exactly, right? exactly, exactly. A hundred percent. Like when you, depending on like you and how you are. Like if you're just a good person, let's just put that out there. If you are first and foremost a good person, then you're gonna get fans. Period. Like mm -hmm. for whatever you're doing, whether you're you put down flooring in a flooring company, like people connect with that. Like with genuine like genuine people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you put yourself out there as that and you're just you and you're like a good person and you're doing you and you're being smart and you, you, you market, you're doing everything. And I mean, you can't lose. You can't, you're not going to lose period. Where did you learn all this from? Like, were you, were there books you studied or were you watching videos online or how did you understand? Or is this just like something that naturally Man, comes to you? It all just came natural for really? real. Like I just got back into reading, um, recently from, from my bro actually. Mm. Um, and that's taken my mindset to a whole nother level. And that's actually something he said. He was like, bro, you done came this far and you don't even read. Like, you about to go to, like, outer right. space now. <laughs> because he know, like, all this shit came just from me. Like, I mean, basically, I put myself, like I, like I said, I come from, like, nothing. I mean, mm. talking, like, homeless for often on a lot, all type of stuff. Living it, if I wasn't homeless, was in the project. So, like, I didn't even graduate high school. Not, I was very smart, though. Not because I couldn't. It was just because we were always, like, homeless and stuff. So, we, you know what I'm saying? So I put myself in that situation at one point where I was like, look, either I'm going to make music work by all means, like failure is not an option, period. I mean, I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to fail, but then I'm going to learn from that and I'm going to get back up. I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to keep going. That's not really failure, though. That's just kind of learning. It's like a lesson. It, I just told myself, like, that's it. Like, it ain't no. And I just kind of figured it out as I went, for real. Like, just came up with new ideas. I'm always coming up with new ideas on okay, well, shoot, maybe this will work. Like, it's all that trial and error. Like, you know, but no, nah, there hasn't been no no videos or nothing. It's just been like, man, I wonder, let me, I wonder if I, let me try to do videos like this. I wonder if this would do good. Oh, shit, see the feedback, tweak it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I try an idea like this, if people will buy this. Okay, they do. Okay, let me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just trial been year after year after year. I mean, I've been doing it now for like uh, 12 years or so of strictly music. So it's it's just from the experiences. What's a common mistake that you see producers do when they're trying to build their Instagram or trying to build themselves or even marketing? Like, what's a common mistake that you see? Uh, well, besides, like, of course, like the, like the weak you, Instagram. The, the prof yeah, the, of course, of not having the like the professionality to it, the pictures and everything, because the, the content on it means everything. You know, mm -hmm. Instagram is content. So or any social media for real, like even Twitter, like what you're posting, what you're tweeting, it's all like content. So. Besides the content, of course, needing to be up to date um, or like not up to date, but you know what I mean? Or just like, like mentality. Yeah, playing a part. It, it'll be a lot of mentality thing because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand, too, that the power of the mind is 100 percent real. Like you tell yourself something and you like, yo, it don't matter if you're Joe Smo with nobody knows you like me. I ain't nobody know who I was. I didn't have no money. I ain't got no family money. I have nothing. But I in my mind was like, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to push my way through. I'm going to get what I want, like, period, you know, and not. And, and, and so the mindset means a lot, like a lot of artists or producers or anything, business owners in general will put their their mindset as like, OK, I don't know, it's different, different things. For one, somebody might be like, OK, all I got to do is just make these dope beats and like. You know, just hope somebody gonna stumble across me and we're gonna get something going. I only need one placement and I'm from right, there, I'm right, gone. Right. And that ain't, no, nah, I mean, it could happen. It could happen. But that ain't the mindset that you kind of wanna be in. I mean, for, at least for me, I'm like, I ain't relying on nothing that like that. Right. I'm gonna go as hard as I can and I'm gonna just push through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make motherfuckers want this shit. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, period. Like, I don't know how it's going to connect. I don't know. You know what I mean? But I'm going to just do my best. You know what I mean? I'm going to do whatever I can do at the time. And I'm going to take every step that I can take and, and just go with the flow and go with the, you know, go with the universe and follow the omens. Mm. <laughs> and um, so that's one thing, people's mindset, man, or, or like another mindset might be like, I feel too, like, I, I'll say this too, that I honestly feel it's like, of course, when you're trying to get into this music, like you want to make money, you know, you want to get some nice things. But if you if it's all that, though, it, like because I had people where that's, that's all that, like people who literally like, oh, I want to start making beats because I want to make some money, bro. I see you making some money, bro. I so want to start making too. beats, bro. <laughs> I want to. Yeah, I want a McLaren, too. So it's like I feel that I feel you. But like, man, it's you, you should try to do what your passion is, though, and monetize your passion. 
because that's when it will really shine and you will really reflect that. Like, do what you really love to do. Of course, you got to have a job, though. So I'm not saying like, you know, but but don't like chase something that's hard, like like a, you know, becoming a music producer that's popping or whatever. When you don't even like, like making you music. don't even give a shit about oh, yeah. that. You just like, I just want to run up this bag real quick because right. it's like the bag gonna come. But it, 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 and it, and even once it does come, if you're not really into that passionately, like we was just talking about it, it it's probably not going to last very long for you because, I mean, we see a lot of producers come and go. You know what I mean? Some of them, I don't, I don't know if that was the case with some of them, but I mean, I don't know. So that's a, that's a big thing too. It's like, you gotta, you should just do what you're really passionate about. Have your mindset. Like as if say, we're talking about producers, obviously though. So mm-hmm. if you're, if we're, let's say we're talking strictly to people who obviously do want to be producers and they are loving that it's really the mindset and just going hard, just going as hard as you can. How have you stayed focused and, you know, not gone down the wrong path? You know what I mean? Especially like, you know, you can get complacent once you, you know, start getting money or you can yeah. totally go left. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get yeah. into drugs and stuff like yeah. that. How have you, you know, I mean, besides, you know, I know you're, you're working on your passion. Yeah. Besides that, how have you really stayed? That's a big one, man. Like that's some real shit for real. Like a lot of people get some money, you know what I mean? And they just, they just ruin their whole life. Maybe even kill themselves. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. It's, it's really crazy out here. So for me, honestly, I pray a lot, you know, and I always, at the end of my prayers, I say like, please keep guiding me on the road to victory and mm. success. You know what I mean? Don't, don't let me stray from this path. You know what I mean? Um, and then in just in general, just learning from, like, I come up real hard from seeing like people that's did all that, you know what I mean? Or even, even not saying they get, got stuff and, but they, you know, they'd went down wrong paths. Yeah. I was going down wrong paths. So I was lucky. I feel like I was, everything that happened in my life, I feel like it was for a reason. I was meant to grow up the way I grew up and I was meant to be, cause I, I've been able to fortunate enough to see both sides. I've seen the dark. I've seen the light. I've seen the hood. I've seen the suburbs. I've seen, you know, the poor, I've seen the rich, I've seen the in-betweens, all that. So it's like, and I have the mindset to be able to analyze that and be like, okay, cool. This is where I need to stay. Like, I don't need to be in none of these lanes over here. Like, mm. of course I want to have some fun. I want to do this one or that, but it's just the mindset again. Like you can't let yourself, go down that and a lot of people do i mean especially a lot of this, man nowadays like all these all, so many of these artists producers all these they just like wigging bugging right, you yeah. know what i mean like we, we they on a timer for real we don't mm. know how long they about to last mm. you know what i mean like because they tripping like i don't want to like i'm trying to last long as i can you know what i mean i'm trying to live a good long healthy life like I'm, you know what i mean so right. it's like i just and, and for for me too like i said i mean for me, a lot is I'm genuinely passionate, so passionate about beats and making music. So I get a high off that, like mm. any of that mm. other stuff. Like I'd rather, I'd literally rather be in the studio making a beat than hitting the club and popping Molly or doing whatever, to, whatever people right. be doing. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. I like to have my fun. You know what I mean? But not like, I don't need all that. Mm. Like, I just stay focused on the grind. Like you, I just... Just keep my eyes on the prize, you know what I mean, and and just keep pushing forward. But that's a that's a good one to bring up, man, because it's sad. It's sad too, because a lot of people will be younger, you know, and they they don't really and they won't have the right people around them. That's another big thing is people around you. Mm-hmm. I don't have nobody around me that's not gonna straighten me up or not gonna let me do nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Like my brother would never let me do anything. Mm-hmm. If he seen some, he'd be he'd straight up be like, not nah, bro, like you know what I mean, like. You got to have the right people around. You don't have no yes men around you. Oh, yeah, man. I, let's see who can do more of this. Let's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, do that, do that. And it's like, nah, like, I didn't, was fortunate enough to live through a lot of that already. <laughs> so it's like, been there, done that. Like, where, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. no, not all that, but you know what I mean? Right, so yeah. it's like, just surround yourself with good people, like minded people, um, and stay focused. That's how I've stayed out of trouble for real. So you you said uh, you you kind of just recently been getting into reading some books. Yeah. Are there any uh, specific uh, self help books that you can recommend to producers? Oh know? man, not just producers, but the one book that I recommend to literally every person in the that I ever meet, everybody in this room. If y'all have mm-hmm. not, even if you read it in the past, because some people are like, "Oh, I read that in high school." Like your brain isn't ready for that book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it. It's called The Alchemist. I seen that mm-hmm. one on your IG. Yeah. You gotta read it. If Never you read haven't read it, it's about, it's only 110, 120 pages. He, oh, my brother told work. me about it. I read it in two days. Cause one, I, I went to the bookstore, got Panera bread, like at an outdoor mall, sat down, started reading it. 
I looked up, I was at 60 pages already. I sat there all day reading it and not just reading it. Like, you know, don't just read like that. It's something that you got to like be engaged, really be into like, like picture the shit happening, like picture you being this, you know what I mean? Like it's a magical, it's a magical book. Like the alchemist, anybody Mm -hmm. in this world, it'll change your life. Even if you already doing good and you Mm -hmm. already like me, I I feel like I already had an enlightened mind. I already got all, you know, I, I know a lot of stuff or whatever, like, spiritual and universal and all that but this will just man no matter what level you at it's just gonna put you up another level mm-hmm. even if you think like oh there ain't no no there's more levels i mean even oprah would be talking about books that changes her life still so mm-hmm. it's like you could you never know to, you can never have too much you know knowledge or too much enlightenment what's, so you what's, read um, that book what's your daily routine looking like oh you know wake up you you said yeah. you pray a lot like yeah. i'm just curious to hear what your routine looks like um so my schedule's real crazy, right, obviously, right, but but right. let's just say don't matter what time it is, I wake up, um, shower. What time you, know, you wake up typically? Man, it'd be that's what I'm saying. It'd be crazy. It'd be it don't. Crazy. It don't. It, I don't Seven know. Seven a.m. Two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> One day it might be you know noon. One day it might be five p.m. It mm. might be. Yeah. Some days I'm up until ten a.m. You know what I mean? Mm. I ain't slept all night. Been been in the studio, and then if, if I go to sleep at ten a.m., I'm gonna sleep till like six p.m. You know mm. so. It depends. It'll be it'll be wild. It'll just be way crazy hours. But w- but whenever I do finally get up, um, of course you get you know beside hygiene and eating. Um, uh, nowadays I've been running on a treadmill, getting a little exercise in. Um, uh, check my emails. You know, make sure everything's good. Get back to everybody. Uh, get into some meetings with like you know producers and stuff. People that I'm working with, artists, stuff like that. Try to see what I can do for the day. Mm. Um, see what people have sent in, all that type of stuff. Um, Any spiritual pra- like practices in particular that you make, like you try to make a routine out of? Uh, well, lately, um, like at night, usually, like once everything's done and stuff like that, I'll read. I- I've been like reading different books, whatever. So mm-hmm. uh, I'll read. That's kind of, that's kind of like spiritual right. for me because what I read is like more so like the book, like the Alchemist and stuff like that. It's Oh yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Um, so I'll read, but then also I do have a ritual. Yeah, I mean most people know it if they follow me on Instagram, mm-hmm. but like almost damn near every night I got like a big bathtub. Um, <laughs> I put bubble bath in that candles. motherfucker. I got the candle lit. Lavender I got oil. I got I'm, I got <laughs> stones and like stones and crystals all around that <laughs> motherfucker. Like and I and I and I prop up my laptop on this like little seat and I throw some anime on there and I just and once the whole day is over and I'm like bro I done you know I didn't did all this work that's like uh, I just be in there chilling in a nice hot bath watching some anime or whatever on that laptop like you said candles lit all that just relaxing you know what I mean and, and it really just does something for me you know what I mean a release and also some of my best ideas ever come to me in that bathtub mm-hmm. I'm talking like some of the biggest money making ideas I ever had. I'm telling, yeah, I mean, right. uh, some dudes be like, bro, this dude takes bubble nah, baths. Nah. I'm telling you, don't nah, got knock to, the bubble you know baths until you I, try it, man. I watched this video. Is crazy. I watched this video on YouTube where these people, um, they tried for seven days, they lived the life or had the routine of like top CEOs, like so uh-huh. Amazon CEO, whatever. Yeah. And every single one of them started doing bubble baths at night. <laughs> And every what? single guy that tried it, they said that was their highlight of the entire hey, day. They said I've it was been the best on this. part. Yeah. I've been on this. You <laughs> asked me how I got here. It's them bubble baths. Hey, you start bro, taking I'm bubble baths, little extra you. salt. But I'm trying to try to get this stress relief right. um, foam from Bath and Body Works. I use that sometime. And I don't know. It's just like a, it's a spiritual thing for sure. Right. Like, and it, like, even if I'm not thinking of ideas or nothing, even if I'm just purely trying to relax, like I got to just be in there just, and I like, I'm big into anime, you know, mm. so I'll be in there watching it just chilling but then like i said sometimes a lot of the times some great ideas they just come to you especially you know especially if you like because some sometimes like i'll get in there and i I don't watch nothing i'm just kind of relaxing and just in my mind you know meditating exactly and like some of my best ideas have came to me and have made good success from it and i was because i was in there you know what i mean my mind was just in another place like yeah, and especially when I used to smoke too a lot. Cause if you if you also smoke and you and you high in there too, boy, mm. <laughs> you about to be you about to be in Zen mode for real. You about to come up with the craziest <laughs> shit ever. So I'll continue. I think I think you were kind of in the middle of talking about your daily routine. Mm-hmm. So kind of just go ahead and finish that off. I mean, that's honestly that's honestly it for the most part. I mean, and then sometimes I'll go out, like I go drive the car around or something, go grab something to eat for me and my mom or something. 
or go get something to cook up, try to cook, learn something. Um, but honestly, most of the time, if I'm not traveling and stuff and I'm at the house, I'm just in the studio. I just mm. get up and I freaking mm. just be in there. Like <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask too, because um, you know, you spend a lot of time at home, you work from home and yeah. everything. Sometimes I find it's a challenge. Like I can get lazy at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can I can get unfocused. Like yeah. how do like I know you we talked about how you stay focused, but specifically for this, how do you? Uh well, lately too, well, this especially like this year, since um some things that have helped me too, like I'm at the house. I, well, I've kind of set my house up to be like a freaking like headquarters. Like I don't even got to leave that motherfucker for real. Like mm-hmm. I could just be in there going ham, you know. Mm-hmm. And then if I do want to take a break, I got the game. I got the Xbox. I got a little theater room or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Call a little shorty over or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to uh, one thing that has helped me not be too distracted too is like uh, Twitch. You know what Twitch is? Yeah, like yeah. live streaming. There's like a handful of people that I, I like to watch on there. So, and there's, and different ones are on at different times. So there's usually always somebody on no matter what time it is, you know what I mean? And I'll have the laptop open, like just over to the side with them streaming, you know, doing their thing while mm-hmm. I'm working in the studio or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause so then, cause it's like, you know, and cause then it's, you're still working, but you can just chill sometime, look over. Right. Um, and, and you know, they're live. So it's like, it's cool. And they're playing a game that you might like or something like that. So it's, it's cool. That's one thing that kind of keeps me, you know, into that or sometimes i'll just take a break go play a little xbox for a minute come back but i mean at the end of the day though it's just kind of relies on you like you just you can't let yourself you know if you know like yo i gotta get this done i need to do that then it's like you just gotta like be on yourself and not Mm -hmm. let yourself get distracted too much but those things kind of help me because one thing too about it i I get messages is like people are like yo for producers people at the working out the home a lot like you alone a lot. You're like, yeah. bro, you don't get like you fucking crawling crazy in there and right, get lonely. Right. But it, it, you do, you can. But it's like, that's why, like I said, I found ways to like I have Twitch open or something because then it feels less. You're not like, like other alone. Yeah, it feels you. like yeah. I mean, because you know what I mean. It's like a live thing, and it's like okay, it's like your cool. boys over playing. Yeah, right? yeah. You somebody you know over there playing some, and you over here working. You know what I mean? Or maybe hop on a Skype call with another producer or somebody. You know, chop it up, talk some mutual stuff that you guys are know about together, stuff like that. But mm. yeah. I feel like it's also a part of like, you know yourself. And uh, if you're the type of person who can't really stay inside, like me, I can't stay inside yeah, for too yeah. long. Like I got to go outside. Yeah. I know that I have to put myself in that environment. So if you're a producer that, you know, you can't stay inside, maybe go into the studio yeah. or finding outlets that work with your personality. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. That's, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely a good, a good point to touch on. Like if you, if you know that you're somebody that don't like to be, you know, in inside for too long. Like me, I mean, I can hunker down and be inside. <laughs> I don't care. Like I could be in there for real. I like to get out. Don't get right. me wrong, but I go in different modes. Like if I'm in my grind mode and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get this stuff done. I'm being there. Right, like, right. but some people be like, oh, I can get in that mode, but like, I, I got to step out for a second, which is cool. But then you just kind of got to cater to yourself. Like right. go for a little drive sometime, you know, go for a little coffee run or something or even now like i just picked up uh or recent well, not recent but a little while ago like the akai the npc live mm. got like a battery power thing on there so sometimes i just be taking that you can take that thing anywhere and go you can go make me out in, the, in a little wilderness you could be yeah, in a man. forest somewhere you know what i mean like if that you know if you don't like to be inside too much but you still want to be productive you can have a little mobile setup and go to a park and be making shit wherever or, or do your email do whatever it is you got to do outside for sure Right. Would you uh, would you consider yourself more of an artist or entrepreneur? Artist or entrepreneur? I'd say both. I have to say both. It's hard to definitely both. I mean, it got to be because. Yeah, I mean, it had to be both. I couldn't pick one because because the way that I the way that I market and every the way I move is like both. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. I'm definitely entrepreneur, definitely business mentality, business owner, stuff like that, like a moves that a big comp- companies would be doing. But then at the same time, I, f- I power that from my artistry, you know, from mm-hmm. my music, you know, the music and from building my music is also helping power that. So it's like, it's kind of works hand in hand. Mm. So for someone that is, would consider themselves more of an artist, how would they compensate for not being as business savvy? I would say either you got to kind of got to learn, you know, mm-hmm. or you're going to have to link up with somebody that, that knows, you know what I mean? Link up because that that's, that's how it is a lot of, most of the time. Right. I mean, you know, like you'll see somebody that's dope, dope artist, dope image, dope music or dope, whatever producer, dope, somebody with a business idea, but they're like, I, I got the package, but I don't know how to ship the package. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right, but then right. you got to team up with somebody that like, yo, I've been there. I know, I know how to ship the package mm-hmm. and I, I believe in that package too. So mm-hmm. let's team up. 
and make some shit happen. Right? Most definitely. So if you don't want to, you know, get it figured out yourself, then and then at the same time be learning though. You know what I mean from them. Not just relying on. Yeah, them. yeah. Not just you know. Well, unless it's like you know. Well, you don't never want to rely. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like always be wanting to learn, even right. if it's somebody where you know, like yo, I'm. Oh, you can rely like, on yeah, them, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. not. Yeah, but always just be wanting to bring out, yeah. yourself. Yep, yeah, just be learning. Cool. You know? Uh, all right, so we got a segment on here called Overrated Underrated, where we give you five topics, and okay. you just simply respond if you think it's overrated or oh, underrated. Shit. Okay. And if, if you want to explain more, we'll go into it. So, Oh, man, all right. We got <laughs> Superstar O on the Overrated Underrated segment on the Producer Grind podcast. Our yes, first sir. topic is starting a beat store in 2018. Ooh. <laughs> uh, underrated? I mean, not, I don't know. Overrated and underrated. It's hard. Why so? That one's hard because it depends on what you're going to do. How you going to do it? If you just going to throw some shit together, throw, get a graphic designer to throw together a website and slap some beats on there and say, hey, come check out my beats. Overrated as a motherfucker. No, that's mm-hmm. not going to do nothing for you. Maybe it'll get you a little sale every now and then, but you're not paying the bills off that. Mm-hmm. Like if you're trying to make some real money, then... If you're really going to do something new, if you about to come to the table like, yo, like, yo, this I got this idea. I'm going to make this beat store like, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen, but like these beat music videos I put out, like where it's like a damn music mm, video. Yeah, I just yeah. put out one like yesterday. And it's just something different like that mm-hmm. where it's like I'm going to promote my beats in the craziest way. Ain't nobody doing and I'm going to really do this and do that. And I think that'll really get then. Yeah, you good. Then that's underrated because there's not enough people doing different stuff like that like right. really but nowadays especially it's so crowded it's so crowded if you want to get some sales you're gonna have to it don't matter about just the beats you everybody the got internet. dope beats there's so many people with dope yeah. beats you we there's probably somebody in this room next to us that makes some dope beats like for real <laughs> i mean there's probably hell of people here i don't know how many people here make beats, but in there. No, <laughs> that's, you know what i'm saying in this building alone so it's like it's not just the beats no matter how hard your beats are it's right. also about your plan here you know mm-hmm. what i mean so it's that depends under and over it's hard depends so, on what your plan is if you like i said if you're just gonna slap them up there nah overrated don't don't do it <laughs> all right fair enough all right second topic on overrated underrated Fortnite. Oh, overrated man. wow <laughs> overrated, overrated. Okay. fuck man that what you playing man i was in the battlegrounds heavy PUBG, okay. PUBG, 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 you know what i'm fine. saying i'm more like you playing on the phone or on the Xbox? Hell no, nah, on the Xbox. <laughs> on the Xbox. On the phone is cool. On the cold. phone is the cool. Phone is cold. If you, but, but, but I mean, it's more of like if you if you in the office and you, right, but I'm right. a, I might as well yeah. just play on the Xbox. Right, I don't need to be on my phone. You know what I'm saying? I had a headset. Exactly. Yeah, go right. crazy. Uh, but so I, I, I tried to play Fortnite a few times, man. I'm like, hell no, nah, bro. Like, cause I'm a gamer for real. Like, right. I mean, I've been gaming forever. As long as I've been in the anime, longer than beats, all this. So it's like, it is a good game. Don't get me wrong. It just caters more towards the younger crowd right, like right. real younger crowd like, don't get i mean any age can like get into it kids. but if you but as a gamer if you get into it there's no aim like you aim down the sights you know in a game you aim down the sights like that mm-hmm. and it pulls the gun up there's none of that you just like hip fire and stuff yeah. and some people that don't know that aren't gamers but there's no real accuracy it's it's called bloom like mm-hmm. you just got to kind of you got to hit somewhere around them and it's going to give you that point. Mm. That's retarded to me. Like, I like real accuracy, real gunplay. Simulation. I want to really play right. some shit. You know what I mean? Like, What's the other one? It's not bat- um, Battlefield. You ever in a Battlefield? Because that's real realistic. That's cool. a hard battlefield's game. Battlefield's cool, but I've been more into the, the Battle Royale mode. You know what okay. I mean? So, like, but I ain't been playing PUBG either for some weeks now because mm-hmm. the new Call of Duty, they came out with the beta. Bruh, no, the new... Oh, they got Battle Royale in there, Oh, right? their Battle it Royale is? shit's okay. on everything. For real? The game is over for, like... Fortnite will still be going because it's so different. It's cartoony. It's like, you know, they. Yeah. I really do like how they have those crazy skins. They're really right. dope and smart with the content. It's just not really the game for, for me. I don't like those... Gra- I don't like the graphics in the building. Like, I'm not trying yes. to be building, playing Minecraft. Ooh. I'm trying to shoot some motherfuckers. Like, I'm not trying to be trying to shoot somebody and they're, like, building... F- fucking ca- <laughs> castles and shit like bro let's get to it like so call of duty though <laughs> man their battle royale mode i'm talking oh man, you know i felt God, call of duty was on the, on the downward slide like they the were they, they were, were i ain't played a call of duty in like four years i think the last one i, did I ain't been on none of Black them I, I, I bought a couple of them played mm. like one match and was like i'm good this is not i'm so over this but yeah. they I, and i didn't think they were gonna do battle royale mode like they did a lot of they people didn't to. but to. dude i'm talking they didn't just do it 
they kick this shit. It's killing everything. Like a lot of gamers on Twitch and stuff are like, they don't even, after playing the beta, they don't even want to play no other game. They're like, I'm literally, they're not, they're not just joking. They're like, yo, I might take a vacation until it comes out because it's depressing to play any other game. Wow. Like the game is so good. Like when that shit comes out, they're about to make so much money off that damn game because their battle royale. You just sold me on it. Dude, I'm telling you, you didn't play the beta? No, I haven't played, bro. bro, I haven't played. The last time I was playing was Call of Duty Black Ops 2. That's it. Can you still get the beta? Nah, it's over now, but the the full game releases um, on the 12th. Of next of next yeah yeah, yeah. the oh, twelfth real, real I mean or no not October oh, yeah October. next month okay. on like the twelfth or something like that hey man it's about to be it's over that they I don't even know how much money they put into that game but it's over and they got really cool ideas too like mm. picture like a the battle royale mode you know how there's a lot of people but picture of zombies everywhere too and it's oh, all the, the world's all destroyed snap. and it's like mm. teams like t- team like like squads. eight teams of 10 like squads zombies and uh, no, bro like they got some okay they, they're going to the next level with this okay. shit like they knew they had to come if yeah. they wanted to compete and they just they didn't just compete they're killing they're killing what it. they brought some over. ai into it too like some artificial into like the what is it reality where you can actually oh, play oh augmented i wouldn't, yeah, augmented I wouldn't be surprised if they did like it's all type it's yeah, they all do right. got they got PUBG uh, virtual reality. Yeah, you know? fuck that though. I didn't try yeah, it. Like weird. even like PUBG, yeah. like I was into it, man. And then after playing that, it makes PUBG feel like a freaking like clunky Outdated. little kindergarten like caveman game. Damn. Like I don't even want to play it no more. <laughs> like it's amazing. Other than these new Call of Duties, what's the most class? Like what's your favorite Call of Duty? Uh oh um man it's hard to say but I think it was like probably Black Ops two Black Ops one you know those mm. Modern Warfare two Modern Classic. Warfare threes those old ones man I was on I was I was whew, Modern I was Warfare on there two with that quick scoping oh my boy. Gosh. yeah with the, the intervention in the Beret fifty Bro, cal me and Bob used Woo. to be on there the whole me and like back then that was the sound click days too like that's all we did was right. play Call of Duty. And you would hear the beats through the headset because we would all be making beats too. And they'd be like, <laughs> right, oh, that, right. that shit sounds sweet. You should, <laughs> you should do a little thing. Well, I'm going to just send it to you. All right, cool. Like, and Call of Duty and beats was all it was. So, right, that's what's yeah. up. All right. <laughs> Next topic on the overrated, underrated segment on the Producer Grind podcast, we got the new FL Studio NPC. Oh, I don't know nothing about it. The yeah, control, it's, it's, uh-uh. not, it's like a, it's a Kai collab with FL. It's oh, a controller called The Fire. You didn't see it? I think I did hear. I think I seen you guys posted a picture of that. Yeah, that. yeah. it looks like a eight hundred eight sequencer kind of thing. I'm gonna just go off looks. I mean, I don't know nothing about it, but I feel like that looks like a. I thought that was like a um a sequencer, like a it you is. know, like it's, a. It's a hardware version of their sequencer, pretty much. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't even use FL that much too, so oh, I don't okay. too much know how good that would be. But if it was me, if I was a Kai in FL and I teamed up, I would have tried to come out with a legit more npc looking thing mm. with maybe that those buttons built in over here on the side or like something but that option, just looks like a big thing. that looks like a big dj like mm. that looks like something that you like just a bunch of buttons it reminds everywhere. me like, like you know the 808 where you can it's got the whole yeah, sequencer. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. i was wondering it doesn't um, seem it like you get too creative to with it like it, it seems very yeah, limiting exactly that's yeah. from just me looking like from True. when you guys posted it i thought it was a dj tool i was mm. like oh that don't i was like is this something i need i'm like oh that, that don't nothing that i need like I am nah, curious I don't like to the try, way, try like it the way out. It looks. You don't like the way it nah. looks. Nah, for me, like aesthetic is a lot too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean for that stuff. Not just looks, but I mean also just the the like. It just looks like a whole bunch of buttons everywhere. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I like the legit. Like they should have just put out a real NPC, like looking at NPC, but maybe it just had also it was made though for FL, so it had like these these shortcuts and these things yeah. that were built like right. right. I don't know what they thinking over there. Hit me up. I, <laughs> we I put together something well, crazy. <laughs> what hardware are you using right now? Or like, um, what's your favorite NPC that you use? I got the NPC Live. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, the that, touch screen. Um, yeah, but I, but honestly, I don't use it as much. I use it like in my videos that I be coming out with. I mean, start, mm-hmm. starting stuff for those. But most of the time, I use my 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 studio at home, which is just like my Kai, uh, the uh, advanced or whatever. The advanced, you know. Yep, that's my MIDI, and then um, you, it's got pads on it to do drums with, mm-hmm. and uh, I use Studio One Four as my DAW, okay. and just you know everything, just going hand with this with the home setup most of the time. All right. Next topic we got analog gear. Oh, analog gear. <laughs> overrated, man. It's overrated. Oh, for now. Real? Yeah. I mean, I you if you would have asked me like four four years ago plus, I'd have said underrated because like it is dope. I mean, mm. what well, well, let me say that it depends. If we're talking engineering, then 
underrated right mm. analog gear for like if you're mixing people's sessions vocal mm. stuff so like organic. that organic that yeah that matters more that that's for real but if we just talking strictly beats Sense and stuff man that's just dead you don't need no phantoms no Korg yamahas no i mean i got the chronos 2 i got the virus i got the freaking integra i've had every keyboard you can think of but i didn't keep none of them i just kept those three because i still like them it's a lot more aesthetically too because of the studio like mm. it, it makes it feel more at home and i but i do really like them sometimes but i rarely ever turn them things on i mean it's like nowadays with technology and the the you know the access that you have to vsts with high high qualities and 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 your loop like anything it's just like you don't really you don't really need any of that like back then it was like you if you wanted real sound in this and real thick sound in that, you, you had, had to go to there. It. But now, yeah. boy, you get you a contact library and it's got you good. What's you don't the need that. What and it's you... like three thousand dollars. You can spend fifty dollars, forty dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you yeah. got a nice little bank. Like it's, it, that. That's hardware is expensive. Like right. fuck that. What's uh? What's the goat VST to you? Goat VST. Um. Hmm. Man, there's many of them for real. I would just say my main ones. Uh, I use a lot of contact because I, well, obviously I own industry kits. So I right. use a lot of our own sound packs, but not only ours too, but like output. I'm a big fan of output and the stuff they drop. So like contact banks, like really good ones. Um, Omnisphere 2. Mm. Um, use a lot of that. They just released a new version of Omnisphere yeah, 2.5 yeah, or something. I haven't, yeah, I haven't updated. I, but uh, some of the new well, my sound crazy. designers have. It's good for us though, as sound designers too, because it, it it's taken sound design to another level for them. Mm. There's more layers and all yeah, type yeah. of stuff you can do. Um, so that's that's gonna we're gonna definitely be looking more into that. But it's a lot of good VST serum. I really like um, Nexus. I, I haven't used Nexus in so long. I oh, hell no. I don't even. I mean, it's a good. Don't don't get me wrong. <laughs> Nexus is always gonna be dope. Yeah. And I used to support them and like buy every pack that came out just to show love. Like you know what I mean. Mm. And I had everything. But the past like three years, two like two three years, I ain't even opened it. And it's like no. It's it's just. You feel I, like they haven't evolved. They haven't evolved exactly. And it's just too much. Like once you really get a lot of their expansions, like bro, I open my Nexus and it's like, come on, bro. Mm-hmm. It's so many f- sounds in there. Thousands. Like I'm like, dude, they, they should have already been came. It's time for Nexus three. If they, they need to drop a Nexus three, which is more modern, looks yeah. even better, has new sounds. If you, if you feel like it, you can import your other Nexus two sounds or select what don't have everything go over there. Cause some of us have, they got so many damn banks. You know right, what I mean? Like right. that's way too much to have in one VST. So, and like you said, like the, the the sound engine needs to be, you know, just more updated. Like, you know what I mean? And Nexus time, it's time for Nexus three. If they came out with that, I would definitely support it. But we, we release a lot of VSTs too. Like we just dropped um Urban Flame, which is they're just like romp like sampler, sample VST, but the mm-hmm. presets that my team puts in there is n- nice. And I mean it's like forty dollars, you know what I mean? Right. You're getting some shit. So I use a lot of our own stuff, of course, because I'd be testing them too before we put them out. Um but I, I mess with anything, really. Well, not anything, but I mess with a lot of stuff, like, for cool. real. But yeah, Nexus, though, I haven't, I haven't messed with it in so long. It's good. It's great. It'll always be legendary, but it's like, it's time for them to, yeah, they, they, it's time for Nexus 3. All right. And the last topic on the Overrated Underrated segment on the Producer Grind podcast, moving to a major city. Um, For music. For music. Moving okay. to a major music city. Underrated, as in you need to do it, as in, yeah. Hell yeah, that's what I'm doing. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like big, big, big deal. I mean, like I don't, so I don't have to, you know what I mean? I can easily stay where I'm at. You know, I'm making a really good living. I could keep doing what I'm doing, networking online, doing everything I'm doing. But it's just, it's going to go crazy when I move here. Like it's about to be over. Like I'm in freaking Dayton, Ohio, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. I love my city, so I'm not knocking it. But for Shut music, up. it's nothing there. Right. I've done all of this from there, <laughs> from an internet connection. Right. Once they throw me into this city, I'm telling you right now, it's about to be fucking over. Mm. It's already <laughs> building up to that. Like, it's crazy. Like, so if you're somebody with that in you and you're like, you, you either even like, if you want to go get it, like, just go, go to a big city. Like, it, it doesn't have to be a specific one. You don't got to go to LA. You don't got to go to Atlanta, like whatever kind of fits good. And it's, but if it makes more sense for you, like for whatever you're like musically, we're talking mm. Yeah, bro, do it. It's so much more opportunity, like anything, everything. It's so much, and you, 
you're thriving in like what you do, like where you we, I go out here, I walk around. There's a lot of people like me, a lot of like minded stuff, a lot, a lot of producers, a lot of music, a lot, a lot of, of businesses, a lot of culture, a lot of people that understand, you know what I'm saying? Like in most just normal, typical cities, it ain't really like that. You know, I go where I'm, I go around, you get people stares be a like, lot. what the fuck is yeah. this dude on? Like, we'll be we walking around, people, oh, y'all not from here. Like, if they don't know who we are, <laughs> right, I'm like, yeah. yeah, we are. It's just right. like, it's just, it's just a different life. Like, it's yeah. a different, I don't so know. Slow it's pay. just they completely different. different. It's just, so yeah, I would definitely say to do it. You know what I mean? If you can make it happen, I mean, there's people that jump in a car, they don't got nothing. They be sleeping in their car until they get it rolling. Whatever you got to do, you know what I'm saying? Go do it. If you feel like, man, I think it, I think, you know, I mean, cause like worst case, what happened? You know, something don't work out, you move back, you know, or you, okay. Like some people like, well, I got family here. I got this there. I mean, you can always visit them. I mean, they ain't not, you know what I'm saying? It's not that big of a deal. It ain't another country, you know, or even I got people, producers that are moving from other countries to uh, LA and Atlanta and stuff like that for the opportunities. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's like, shit man go get it you know what i mean it ain't gonna it ain't it can't and it can't hurt you mm-hmm. to you know it's only gonna help and even if you are already doing good just think of that next level it's gonna take you to you know like i'm saying you know and if you're not really you know if you're or if you're starting from scratch especially hell yeah like if i was starting from scratch right now and all of a sudden like i i'm just like man i want to make beats like i it it would be a a lot harder to to do it right now from scratch, you know, cause it's so crowded, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Social media, everything, you can do it. Anything's possible, but it'd be way easier too if you just move somewhere what too. What would be some of your first steps if you were moving to Atlanta and you had no, there was no superstar O? Um, well, I would, obviously I, I had to try to figure out where I'm gonna be living at. So let's just say I got a living situation. Let's say you got all that. Uh, man, first steps for me, like I said, I'm a grinder, bro. I'm, I'm a, force my way through. So I'm going to go to every studio. Everybody would know my face because I'm going to be in there just for nothing. Like, is there anything I can do? You know what I mean? Like what y'all need? Like, <laughs> I'm a, you know, and, and I'm going to be trying to build as a, as a person before I just jump down your throat with some beats. That means a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you like gotta, establish a relationship. Yeah. Okay. yeah that you got to understand that like nowadays there's so many people doing everything. So, and there's so many people, think of how many people get, these people in these situations get just people just jamming down their throat every day, all day. Hey, hey bro, I make music. I make beats. Hey, hey, bro, I got this. Bro, they, after a while, you're just like, dude, you know what I'm saying? So I, I would just be trying to build on a, would he be bringing up nothing for a while? You know what I mean? I'd yeah. just be, I'd be let it be known. Like, this is what I do. But yeah, we, we get, we, you know, I'm just trying to hang right. out. I'm just trying to see what's up. Right. And it just wiggling. I'd just be wiggling. You got to wiggle. That's one, <laughs> that's one thing we've learned forever. You got to wiggle. You got to know how to fucking wiggle. I feel that. Yeah, I wiggle my ass. No, Paul, I'll be wiggling my way through Atlanta. For I'm real. I'm wiggling. I'll be, for real. At night in the bathtub, <laughs> in the daytime, I'm fucking moving, baby. I'm wiggling. Like, I'm hitting every studio. Everybody be like bro yeah that's why like an old be coming you. you he be coming to your studio too them all bro and he cool though i ain't gonna lie man you know what i'm saying like yeah you heard his shit i ain't heard nothing i heard his shit was hard for real that's all it is yeah, i'll be that's all i'll be I'm fucking wiggling that's what okay. you gotta do you gotta you gotta be moving shit that's that's real shit bro yeah that's what's up bro. yeah um let's say for overrated underrated right yeah so, i'll say uh, it's pretty successful we see yeah. so overrated. Most definitely. Uh, we see, you know, you're real big into car culture. Yeah. Um, you know, you got the McLaren, the yeah. Lamb, and all that. Yeah. Um, just talk well, to the Lamb's gone. The Lamb's gone? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people still be thinking I have. No, I got. I just got the McLaren and the i8 now. Well, not mm-hmm. just, but yeah, the 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 Lamb the Lambo got replaced for the 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 Lambo the Huracan it, it originally got replaced by an Aventador. I got the Aventador and was like, yo. <laughs> I think this was stupid because oh you you so oh you I didn't even know you had the Aventador. yeah I had an Aventador for like a month and I made him take it back for real yeah and by the time and I couldn't get the old one back because I had already took all my custom stuff off yeah. sold mm-hmm. it and they had already sold mine like my car that you seen the, the Huracan when I had it, yeah. it was dope somebody bought that as soon as it was for sale mm. so it was like well damn well now what am I gonna do so then I jumped into the McLaren yeah so what what was wrong with the Aventador. So oh, the main reason I got that is because like I'm in a car team where like all the motherfuckers have that's all they got is all vented doors and they was always like oh your Lambo doors don't go up they always, <laughs> te- always teasing me and shit and I'm like I don't care because my car still looked way better than all of theirs even though they had a vented doors like my Huracan was sweet so I was like I didn't care about that but I, I always like to try I, I like experiencing new things you know what I mean so I was like man you know I had this car for a while now almost you know a couple years you know what I mean so I'm like 
and you know I can make it happen you know like fuck it like why not so man honestly too I was I was high all the time like weed high and I think it was just some impulse shit you know I called up a dealership and it was just like yeah we could get you this much I was like oh shit I can still get that much for it trade it in and that like boom boom I'm like fuck it let's do it (laughs) but then when it came and I was like damn I miss my old car though. Mm. Like now that I got this car and it's dope. Don't get me wrong. Inventor can never not be dope. But when you get into cars, you also get into like, well, for me, customizing. And that shit costs a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I got spent all this more money to customize this shit. And it was like just looking at the, because I had a car note on it. I, I didn't buy that shit cash. So I, had, I was like looking at the bill on it. I'm like, damn, I still owe it. I'm like, man, is it really worth it? Mm. So I was like, I mean, I can afford it. You know what I mean? But I'm like, is it really worth it? So I was like, I mean, I'm going to sit on it for a while. And then I stumbled across the McLarens, the 650s. And this is Spider, hardtop, convertible. You put that shit go down. Mm, that's hard. And I had seen the deals you could get them at. And I was like, bro, that's what I should have jumped in. I, you know, it's super sweet, crazy. It's faster than that. And it's hardtop, convert, all that. You know, some like doors, everything. It's got everything I want. So I was like, man, that would have been. I'm always looking for a smarter move, too. So mm. it's like, even though I'll, that's one thing, but everything happened for a reason. I was meant to learn. And that's what I said, like on Instagram, every, everywhere that everybody was watching, like they learned from you guys learned from me because you, you got to learn, even though you can afford some, you should, I mean, you should all mm-hmm. the time. Right, or, and that's right. what anything, or even though, even, not even afford, like, even if it's something else, even, you know, just because you can do something don't mean Doesn't you should mean do right something. Move, yeah. Right. You should, you know what I mean? Especially if it's a big ass move like that, because also in the back of my head, I'm like, bro. And I knew I'm planning to move to Atlanta probably, you know, in the next year or year and a half, whatever. It was a while then, but I'm like, man, that wasn't a smart move. Like right. I could put, put those funds into something better than this fucking thing sitting here, you know, and still have a banger, you know, a banging. So that's what I did. Move to, mm-hmm. and I'm happy I did too, because I'm declaring it's great. I got it looking crazy, mm-hmm. looking and sounding crazy. Oh, definitely. It's my you favorite have, car. Do you have that? What was the Acura? I thought you said you had an Acura. What's the supercar? The, super the NSX? Acura. Yeah. Do you have no, one of those? Mm-mm. No, oh, I've okay. had, I had the, as far as, so at first I had got a, a M6, a BMW M6. I bought that from Vibe actually, and then and then from there I got a, a Audi A4 as like a sidecar. Then I got a, a Audi A7. Mm-hmm. I replaced the A4 with that. Then I got I replaced the M6 with an R8. Mm-hmm. Then I got rid of the, I got rid of the A7 and I got like this wide body like custom blue BMW was crazy. Like a I 650? Yeah, Seven I didn't keep it that year. It was a 650. Mm. I didn't keep it that long though. Um, then then I got rid of the 650 and got the Huracan, the Lambo. Mm. And then I, well, before that, I replaced the the R8 with the i8. Mm. And then I, re- yeah, so. Just running through them. That's, man, that's a, <laughs> dude, that's another thing to learn from me is like, bro, Man, them cars is expensive as fuck, and I've owned all just of the them. Price. I've it's never also leased that goes no into car, it. Yeah. so it's like not because I mean it's you. It's fine to lease a car, but, but not up it. in that range. There's no point, like you know what I mean, because you're gonna be paying the same amount a month as to own it. You know what mm. I mean? So that's stupid. Don't don't do that unless it's like a little daily driver. Yeah, lease that motherfucker. But if it's like a side of supercar, hell no. You just wasting your money. You know what I mean? So. Mm. It's a lot of money when you go flipping through them shits, man. I'm talking crazy money. Yeah. Like it's a lot of money. You just keep flipping through them shits every other every other year. But you know, I learned my lessons, and you know, it's too late now. Dude. Who came but, out with the truck? Was it Lamborghini had a truck? Or yeah, they, they got yeah, that they new did. truck. Oh, it came out. I, I think so. Was SUV. Well, it's an SUV, but and yeah, Rolls Royce had the truck come out too, right? Yeah, I ain't messing with you know, that like, though. The nah. Bentley trucks are fire though. The Bentley trucks, I. I feel like I, I don't like them. They don't, I, can't. I, I, I feel don't like, like the way they, they look. If you oh, took away the Bentley logo yeah, yeah, and you yeah. put a Volkswagen on yeah, there, you'd, yeah. you'd be like, all right. You'd be like, yeah. You'd be like, exactly. See, you'd, exactly. It looks like hard, it, it's got the, the Audi. Yeah. Like the Audi yeah. Oh, the, uh, the Bentley truck. Yeah. Like Audi it truck. got the look of like some like the the mold of it looks like a London car to me. Yeah. Like it's got this weird London like taxi cab. Weird taxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like old school London taxi cab look. Like I I mean, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. I've seen some because I mean, if I had one, it'd be customized. It'd be crazy. Right. I mean, anything I get, I'm going to change it to another level. But yeah, the Lambo truck, though. i to put a though, spoiler on it. For, oh, yeah. I'm going to be crazy. That's what one thing. That's an, Well, that's one thing I'm, I'm, I'm getting into now, too, is car customization. I'm, like, investing into some car custom company type thing. Because that's one other thing I got. I've noticed over the I have an eye for that. Like, mm. I can take any car. You give me a, doesn't matter if it's a Honda Accord, whatever the hell it is. I'm going to make that shit look way sweeter. Mm. Like, you're going to be like, damn, you mm. did your thing on that. <laughs> like, I know how to customize a car. You know mm. what I mean? So, it's like, yeah, but the new, the Lambo, the Lambo SUV, SUV is 
nice. Mm. Yeah, really nice. And I think, uh, didn't you say something like around the time when you got the lamb, you had sold like 500 exclusives to yeah. a video game company yeah. or something like that? That's, that's how I originally was able to get that was from acquiring a, a nice lump sum of cash from doing that. It, was, mm. it, wasn't a, it wasn't a video. It was like an app that was supposed to... I've seen other things like this come out since then, and I and it wasn't them. So I don't know if they sold their idea to another mm. company and they rebranded, or I don't know what happened. But they it was an app where you were gonna go on there and there was beats and you could record straight from the app. But it took it to another level too, where you could also look up studios near you from the app, do all types of stuff for, for an artist. And so it was a really smart idea. And they they came through and bought like everything I had on almost mm. like so many beats. So, yeah. Do they reach out to you or you reach out to them? They reach out to me. Mm-hmm. Just straight up. I thought it was fake at first, too. I mean, because I'm like, who the fuck? Ain't nobody about to hit me up saying. Right. Well, at first it was real normal. It was just like, how much, you know, would you would you be willing to sell like a bulk exclusive rights deal on Beats? And I'm like, I've had that before. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, we could work, you know, work something out. And they were like, well, what's your limit? You know, and I was like, well, I don't know. What do you mean by limit? Like, and they were, I'm like, because I don't know what they mean. It's like, well, how many would you, what, what how many would you be willing to sell from your catalog? And I'm like, buy all of them. If you want. <laughs> like, I don't, what do you mean? And they were like, well, we, we damn near won all of them. And I was like, man, these motherfuckers is playing. <laughs> like, ain't nobody coming through. What you need 500 beats for? Like, as an app, I'm trying to even think, like, what, what what's the purpose for Well, it wasn't 500. 500. It was like 300 and oh, something still, or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the point of that? Like, man, you only have I so many beats behind the, what I ain't doing? asked too many questions, but <laughs> I, 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 all, all I cared about was that check. But um, but I did, but, but we talked, and it was like, that's why I, it was about the app. So they were going to have a tour. It was the app. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, like I said, you can download the beats on there. You can browse them. You don't have to buy the beats, right? They, it would come with a set amount of beats, right? You, the app will be free, but then it would be uh, in-store purchases to where you could buy beat packs of other styles. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like if you wanted, you could get 20 more this style beat for 99 cents or $2 or whatever. So mm-hmm. they needed a lot of beats to be able to, for their plan to right. release packages of beats right. on there for artists over a time span of a couple years so a year or something. would have been run through so yeah they would have oh, ran okay. through that and they were looking at other producers too uh i don't know who else they bought stuff from because nobody else ever like hit me like oh they hit me too but i know that they bought a lot from uh overseas because they were overseas too i think oh, okay. from overseas people and i think the way i got plugged was just just the just internet random. somebody had probably said yo this dude over here be killing it mm. and then they they plugged me mm. but yeah, that's what they. That's why it, it, the the big amount makes sense because it was like you know it was a, it was a smart idea. But that's what I'm saying. I don't know what happened. Mm. Like I don't, I never heard nothing nothing. I mean, but the check cleared, and I'm like mm. shit. Okay, I don't I don't know. So you um you had mentioned before just like how you uh, when you're talking about with the car, you said you were smoking a lot and you made the impulsive decision. Yeah. I'm just curious to hear how was that? How was your relationship with weed back in the day, and then how is it now? Um. Well, so all last year. And beginning of this year, I, I was smoking like not all the time, pretty much. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, shit, damn near for all wake up, let's go to sleep. But yeah. it was like, but it, I was still working, you know, mm-hmm. and I was still productive. And it, it, it was a time frame where it did something for me too. Like, and I'm still like at the, at now I don't smoke at all. Like I quit, but it was only because like, I love weed, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But it was because of more health. Like I, I was born with like a heart condition mm-hmm. and I, f- I started feeling like pains in my chest and like crazy shit was going on. And I was like, man, I wonder if it's because I'm smoking so much weed. Like, is, could it be related to this? Like, so I would quit and I would see and it would slowly go away. Mm-hmm. So I, I believe it was related to that for sure. Because one thing about smoking weed, you got to understand is like, you know, of course, nobody ever died from a weed overdose. Yeah, but it can definitely cause problems because it's still smoke. Yeah. Any smoke that you're inhaling Combusting into your body, anything, yeah, yeah, it's carbon monoxide. It's going to your lungs, going by your heart, going by all that. And you can still get cancer from that. You still get all type of stuff especially from that. Smoking backwards or yeah, smoking all that, too. especially all that. Yeah, and I was just smoking papers. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like you're burning right. something and you're smoking right. it. So now uh, I, I try to get like edibles, like straight from like dispensaries and stuff. Oh, okay. like, mm you know, <laughs> on some plug stuff right. because that, you know, is just gets in your system and it's not no smoke and it, it might take a little minute to more longer to kick in, but you don't really got to worry about all that. But so I still have a relationship with weed, but it's more on the edible mm-hmm. side be mm-hmm. just to be. How'd you, you balance know? your workflow? Like, cause I know a lot of times people, you can get into a habit where yeah. you get into that cycle of just smoking and that becomes your main focus. So how did you yeah. stay balanced between you? It, know? Well, it honestly helped me for real. Like, mm-hmm. because at that time too, last year I, I went through kind of like a dark, 
depressed state right. sometime because where I went through some stuff with like an ex-girlfriend, all type of stuff. I was alone all the time, shit like that. So it was like, it kind of helped me lift up, you know what I mm. mean? And just when I would be high, like smoking or whatever, I would, I liked like making beats. Like I'd come up with some crazy stuff mm. or I'd come up with some cool ideas and stuff like that. So I was one of the, some people will get really productive when they've been smoking, but some people, excuse me, will be more of a couch potato. Does it depend I on could, the strain that you were? It definitely can because, yeah. you know, indica sativa, depending right. on what, what you're smoking or whatever. But even on either one, I would get productive. But it, it also depends on how much you would smoke. Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, say you had a little, you know, a little joint. The best thing to do is to just hit that thing like two times and then put it out. Put it out. Like most people be like, say we was in here right now. It's like, like let's spark up. Possible. We would be passing this thing around until it was gone. And we would all probably hit it at least like, four five six times i mean not not hit it like we did it a bunch of times because you do it you would sit there for a minute with it mm. pass it around it would just keep going that ain't the way to that for me that wasn't right. the way you it, you'll mess up your tolerance doing that too just hit it a couple of times get you'll get into a nice little groove like you know what i mean you're not like slap like damn right. bro where the money you know shit. <laughs> you, you like you 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 feeling it but right. you like I would be more creative with it. So I'd be able to do anything I want to do still. There's a, also a point where it's like a point of no return. Like once you get, yeah. once you get too intoxicated, once you get, you get so, yeah. like you get paranoid, yeah, you get yeah, it can, anxiety and yeah, exactly. Kind of and that, like that. You, and that's what, what, why I would talk to a lot of people and they'd be, I, I'd be telling people like, man, I think we would really help you with your anxiety or depression, whatever they might have going on or just, just in general. Cause it, it helps magnify it too. It can, but that's usually it does that when you do too much yeah. or, in the in the very beginning, it can be if you're not used to it at all. You know what I mean? Then you could freak Completely out. You could freak yourself your out. Yeah, but if you're like only doing a little bit, you're used to it, or even like edible wise, like 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 I said, you know, get it from a dispensary. It says on the package how much is in it. Don't go crazy on it. Just have a little bit. Wait a little while. You know, and get a little groove going. Like we definitely like I feel like elevates can elevate you and take your mind up here, you know, and let you like, like, like he explains this. It's like, you just look down at everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can analyze things better. Like say you have this idea or something you're trying to figure out, you know, it just, your brain works differently. You can analyze things a lot differently when you're, when you're high on weed, you know what I mean? It's, it's a beautiful thing for real. I love weed for real. I wish there was like, I don't know, like some, I even tried like the, the, the oil pens. <laughs> I got videos if I showed y'all this motherfucker on that pin. <laughs> Boy, that's, that shit too is like, whoo. Like, it's a whole different It's experience. not smoke, but it's still bad because it's the oil. And then they make, to make the oil, they use these carcinogens. Was and it vegetable top, glycerin? Yeah, you know, all that. You, you yeah. never, yeah, all, no matter which way they did do it, it's just like yeah, still. If, it, if you heat it up at too hot, like there's a certain temperature where it's not as harmful. But if you yeah. heat it up past that, it's uh -huh. like 40 Formaldehyde times. or something. Yeah, it's like 40 times more potent or more. Um, carcinogens in it than regular smoke. So if you heat it up too hot, it can yeah. be more damaging See? than yeah. if you were just yeah, I've heard it can, I heard like at too high converse to formaldehyde or something crazy. Something crazy. Thing. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, see, I, I wish it was... What about the, uh, the volcano? I did see that, but that's is that's not smoke? Uh, no, nah, it vaporizes. It's just straight Complete vaporizes vap the weed? Vaporizes the herb, yeah. For real? Yeah. Damn. I got one. They're dope, but it's just, it's a process. But yeah. You might, you know what I mean? You might that, like it though. That might be something I might look into. So it's Pull not the smoke though. Hook it up no, to the it's vapor. Out. Yeah, it vapes, fills so up the balloon. So that's why I was wondering too. So all these people, all these kids, all the people that be vaping, that's not bad for you? Like the, that flavored about, it's vape? Of, it's the tobacco it's vape? For you, yeah. Like no, just that flavored vape. Yeah. So like it's, anything, first of all, anything that has, is like flavored and has all those artificial ingredients yeah. in it. Yeah. That of course is bad for you. Now your are How is the volcano then not? The volcano it's still weed, it's just right? taking that you just you grind up weed, you put it in there, and it heats it and it blows a fan, and it just like basically just takes blows the THC off because once you heat it up, it separates, blows it into this balloon. And I guess that's burning. They an say it's hundred percent not smoke. It's burning hundred percent because it tastes like when you, I've heard of it. When you hit the first, when you hit the first balloon, uh -huh. it tastes like like straight bud. Like it tastes Damn. exactly how the bud smells. I love the Does way, it. but I've always said too, like man, I wish this shit tasted like it smelled. I love Grab the one, bro, smell of it. weed. I might like have it. to, because I, I heard of it and somebody else recommended that. But well, there's one other thing too, is like nowadays with the, with the weed too. Like I've heard some crazy shit in the streets. Like you never know unless you're getting that shit right from a dispensary where that shit might have came spice, from. K2. Yeah, man. Who knows who like who or did what to it? Yo, man's might not have did it, but who they got it from and who then they got it. From. It goes down a line, and and along that line, who knows what somebody did to try to make their shit fire? You know, I heard of people putting coke. 
in a water bottle, shaking it up, spraying the weed, letting it dry. There's no way that you could tell that right. that shit was in there. It's in a water bottle, sprayed it. You can't tell. Damn. But right. you will be, damn, this shit's like, fire. Feels, feels right. a little something different. I'm lit, lit off this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, nah. So that was another thing, too. I'm like, damn. So now, like, I, I just kind of, like, get edibles straight straight from a dispensary and it's just like well i know it's good i know what they the weed they use in it too is good but but yeah a volcano and a good good all the way organic bud that would be sweet mm. i could see that i might you look feel like legalization that. of it or um kind of taking it away from the black market would have make the actual flower more organic or more natural like take away those yeah i mean i think just a thousand million percent they just got to go ahead and legalize it like in all states it's so stupid to me how yeah. it's i mean i don't think they i don't think the people in for example ohio are really as hip to that idea yeah um like just of being a more conservative state so i mean i think it's gonna no be, no no yeah. but they but that's what i said to get to ohio though it goes through other states goes through other places so it's like what do you mean by that Oh, you're talking like about like them packs. Right? Oh, like they, I was yeah. talking about just oh. like the idea of legalizing it. Like it's gonna oh, be much, oh, yeah, it's much yeah, yeah, easier yeah. for Atlanta. No, to be even like, Atlanta's yeah. really strict on weed. Did you just hear about right. freaking they only got no, they only got T eight uh those oil pens CBD. Are, someone was just saying that those oil yeah. pens are yeah. Someone was just saying in Atlanta those oil pens are schedule one. Yep, because they're concentrates. Any kind of concentrate, weed concentrate, yeah. schedule one, same. That's what I'm saying. Coke, you see how strict shit. they like that's ridiculous. But one, one thing too, like that has to be mentioned is I know you're into health stuff, GMOs and all that stuff, you know, like with the hybrids and all yeah. that stuff. Like, you know, Monsanto pulled yeah, out. Yeah, Monsanto patent. just patented their own strain, like their own genetically modified weed strain. So it's Man. like, we got weird stuff like that coming. Yeah. So like right now it's like, you know, you know, where it's legalized, it's still like, it's not regulated at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which it has its good and bad things. Cause you know, yeah. come with, with the regulation comes companies like Monsanto. Well, it is they regulated. Like, they are regulated, <laughs> right? Like they have to meet certain um, standards. Yeah, but it's not like... You know, no, what like, I mean? like, like you go to the dispensaries, they look like, bro, anyone could have opened this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's like real mom and pop. Talk. I mean, some of the dispensaries, like Med Men and all them, they're like, you know, real corporate, but you yeah. might want to keep it that way, the mom and pop, just so because once you get once you get a Walmart of weed distribution, like y'all see here, the quality of food at Walmart. Can yeah, that's what I'm saying. Weed? That's what I'm yeah. saying. You got yeah. the good and the bad like, on both but sides. But they got high end ones though. Like you, like when I was in like in Vegas, man, I went crazy out there at them dispensaries. Like I'm talking, it's like a, it's like some James Bond shit. You walk in there, yeah. like it's some like real. An apple sh- sh- yeah, they got yeah. one that's like an Apple store. Yeah, literally. I went to that one. I went to all of. Them. I went to well, I, all of. There's a lot, but I went to like six of them in like two days, going ham. Like and s- some of them are like you. You just know just with anything else, like. Once if they finally say like, okay, this is ridiculous for it to be legal in some places and not others, and they just pass it, and there's dispensaries in all states, oh my god, like that's gonna be so dope. Yeah. I mean, but it'll be it'll be cool even if it's all regulated because it'll be like everything else. There'll be different tiers to it. If you want, you know, if you want to spend, you know, this, there'll be a little Walmart. You know, right. you kind of you go to you if you like, yo, I want nothing but the best of the best. There's gonna be them too. You know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just like with anything else, there'll be different. There'll be like different levels to right. the dispensaries, you know what I'm saying? So okay. it's like, but it'll be dope because you'll know. And if they're smart, I mean, they, they, it's gonna make them so much money as it already is. Dispensaries make so much money, it's insane. Crazy. And it'll also get rid of like so much of the illegalness, you know what I mean? Like, cause it'll be way hard for people to be pushing these packs when you can just go to a dispensary in any state and mm-hmm. pick some up. You know what I mean? Like, unless the price is right, cause the yeah, price is unless the pr- but then the- even yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's one thing that will keep them going. But yeah. a lot of people too, like though, like me, I'd rather e- pay a little extra, extra to, to know, know that right. this shit is all the way. All the way good and regulated, right. you know what I'm saying? Then the oh shit, I know my man's ain't fucking me, but did this? It went right. down a line to get this back here, and I don't know who did what to it. I didn't see him pull this bush out and prune it, you know what I mean? So right. I'd be paranoid about that stuff after right. hearing the stuff I've heard, and I've literally met and seen people that got messed up from stuff. I'm like, nah, I ain't trying to mess with none of that. Really? Um, yeah. Is there any other um any other substances you dabble with outside of marijuana no honestly all i ever really did i is weed you know because to me i feel like there's nothing else you don't need nothing else i mean for real if you no matter what level high you want to get bro that that weed to get can get you there for real Mm -hmm. like my man's right here has gotten so high before he didn't know who nobody in the room was (laughs) and he was freaking out like bro did literally people he's known his whole life was just like Bro, I don't, where am I? Who is right. these mo- Like, Damn. so it's like, it don't matter how high you right. want to get. If you really like, yo, I'm trying to trip and see shit and go mm. crazy. 
you can get a really potent ass uh strain um, and hit it out of a big ass stupid bong or a volcano on whatever and be out of there or if you just want a little buzz oof. you can do that too you know what i mean like once you get into all that other shit it's like that's not like needed. a nightmare that's not like a nightmare what you went through that's Six crazy. foot bomb. But see, I don't smoke. I, at that time, I hadn't smoked. Yeah, oh, okay. Smoke, you know? got you so got homies is like, yo, hit this six foot bomb. Y'all know? foul for that, I'm man. Like, nah, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I don't know, man. For real. <laughs> that's so that's what like in my growing up though, I did one time I tried Xanax when I was younger. I was like, hell and I never tried that again. Because like, white, it ain't right. It didn't even, it was just like it wasn't even a high. It was just like it just make you, make just you go to slump. Sleep. Like yeah. I was just slumped. Like, yo, what? Um and there was some other pill I tried. I was it Xanax too? I think it was still the Xanax. I tried I literally went home one night and was like looked at myself in the mirror and I don't really remember it, but when my best, my friend at the time told me like, I tried to fight myself. Thought I thought my reflection was a person. I don't know, man. Just throwing hands I, you know what with I'm the saying? mirror. I'm throwing, try, he's holding me back from the mirror. It's like, like, and I'm, not even, I'm not even like that. I'm not even <laughs> like that. So yeah. it was like, bro, he was like, you just completely was tripping. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, and then I, I've never drank, never drank. Cause I, I nothing against it, but I, I came up, alcoholism runs through my family so hard and it's right. ruined so much. And I know I'm a strong person, so I know I'd be able to just drink and be chill. But it don't it don't look like nothing I won't fuck with anyway. Like I'd mm. rather it's just weed, you know what I mean? I don't need nothing else. Yeah, I mean, really don't sure. need anything. But if I had a choice, you know, I was like, man, I want to do dibble and dab. Weed's the only thing. Like you don't really anything else is like you're doing too much, and you don't need none of that shit, man. You ever eat shrooms? No, no, no. But I have friends that do and have, and I've heard it. And I was like, oh, I could see how that could be cool. I'd be on Xbox sometimes with one of my dudes. He'd be tripping on shrooms while he's on Xbox. Yeah. Real unproductive when he does, because we'll be playing a game, and I'll be, be in the no mode going ham, and it, you'd just see him on the map just like going in circles. <laughs> like it's, You know how you can see their vision? <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what you doing, bro? And he's looking like, at I'm looking at this digital like, rock. The, fucking, yeah. the floor Look at is the like. the detail they put in the rocks. Man. <laughs> right. He, exactly. He'd be like, bro, I'm just now realizing, like, yo, they mm. really you spent some time the clouds, on man? the grass <laughs> on this map. It's crazy, B. I'm like, bro, man, go sit your ass down somewhere. But I could, but when they explain it to me, that is, you know, something, you know, I could see how people could be in, but it's, I don't know. I, I don't know if I. It just Not ain't for style. me. It ain't yeah, for me. Yeah. I don't want to be seeing no shit that ain't there. That's why even with weed, I don't. I, I make sure I'm good. I've gotten too high to where I'm like, bro, I want to. Fuck, I want to come down, but not so high to where I'm like, I'm seeing shit and like, <laughs> I don't know people around me, nothing like right, that. It's yeah. more of an anxiety, you know. Right, what I mean, I don't want to get no higher than none of that. I, I, boy, I, I don't even know what I'd do if I was high to where literally we was in this bitch like, man, seeing sh the stuff that they be describing to me. Nah, bro, I I'm ready can't to go to sleep. I right, would not be. Able to, I wouldn't. Uh, uh. That is ain't for me. But I can see how some people will fuck with it though, for sure. And like DMT and all that stuff. I, I heard this stuff can really open up your brain and then take it to another dimension yeah, but i'm trying I, to stay in this ready one. for that i don't think i'm trying i probably go to that dimension what if you go there and you love it you just want to stay in there you know right. what i mean you just be it nah i'm cool i'm gonna just stay my ass or if right you here. come back and you're like man i don't even i don't even right. want to make beats no more right <laughs> <laughs> beats are so below like, <laughs> they really they really so don't elementary, mean like. they, right so <laughs> elementary like this music shit means nothing like, <laughs> right, right, what, right, is, right. what is gravity what is life like it's a real hippie shit this is so pointless like yeah i'm like hell nah you, I'm, I'm cool. I feel like that stuff is too powerful to be playing. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like, exactly. That's opening you up to a spiritual realm. Like, yeah. that you really shouldn't even be going. Yep. Even with weed too, that's opening you. It up. Can. I feel like it opens yeah. your spirit up and like. Yeah. There's a point where you you exposing yourself to stuff the that you stuff don't that even you, need to be exposed yep. to. Like, that's true. That's true. Yeah. One yep. thing uh, before we get out of here, I want to yeah. talk about. Um, I know you're you're big on um, you know alternative options besides college. Yeah. So what advice would you give to you know a young person coming out of high school that's not really sure what they want to do, but they, they, they think they have entrepreneurial tendency. Um, so I would say for one, like I never, 
even though like my license, like sometimes like I get flack sometimes from like moms, like cause my license plate on the clearance says no degree. Yeah. And like, you know, it'd be a family with like a mom and they're like, <laughs> don't look over there. Dave's probably sells drugs. Or something. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm not against school though. I'm just showing, trying to give it a message off that it, it wasn't for me. Like I, 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 it wasn't for me. I couldn't physically do it or afford it. And I mean, you can always make it work right. nowadays though. You can get all type of like little online, like fundings and help whatever but it just wasn't school just wasn't for me like so it's like i would tell you i would recommend that the person just really dig deep on themselves don't don't even think about like you know what it's gonna be like think about you like what's best for you like is school for you do you really think that you know and what you want to do like you know what i mean because if we're just talking about not even just musicians just in general people like what you want to do, you might have to go to school for it, which sadly, some well, not sadly, like trying to be a doctor. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got it exactly. But for some things, you don't need school, you know what I mean? And and, but let's just even say we're talking about like, you know, musicians or anything where it's like you you can or any any field where it's like you can go and 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 it'll help you, but you could also make it without it. It's just you just kind of got to like fill it out yourself. Like, is that really something you want to do? You know, because it can be dope. I could imagine school also being dope and being a life experience. Like, Bro, it, it can you, be I dope. I go to Georgia State, bye. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Fun, that, so I, I've been to, like, college parties, all that, and been like, damn, this shit's sweet. Like Living on campus, living in downtown yeah, Atlanta, bro, like, what? That I could see this shit being crazy. a lifetime experience, for sure. And and that's not something you want to miss out on. That's like if I always it's something, promote. Like, yeah. I always, say, always encourage it just yeah. for what you learn. It's not what you learn in school. You're not going to learn. I mean, you'll learn in the books yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. but it's really the experience being exposed exactly. to the people. Exactly. Growing in yourself. Yep. It'll help, like, your mindset, everything. But, right. like, for seeing me. Seeing what you don't want to be, seeing what you do want to yep. be. Exactly. Yep. That's so. That's why I say I just say like for you individually, it's all individual thing. Like just dig into yourself, and if you feel like man, I'm you're forcing yourself to go to school, right. and you're like man, I hate this shit. Like I don't want to. I rather then don't do it though. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Like if you don't, if it's not something you have to do, you can make it on your own. You don't need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if it's like man, you know, or at least try it. You know what I mean? Because if you have if you have the opportunity to, I always say to try it. Because there's people that be like, man, I could have, I got like these scholarships, or I got this, I got that. I got whatever. Go ahead. Why not? See it. You know, try it out. You mm-hmm. know, and you'll know after a while. And some like I, I could like he said, I could see it being dope as hell. Like mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it was just my lifestyle and how I came up. Like I ain't I didn't really it just wasn't work. It wouldn't have worked for me. Right. You know what I mean? But if it if it would have worked, I could see I could have I could see doing it. Like he like now, boy, if they let me in college right now, boy, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that motherfucker going crazy. Like even even with high school, because like I said, I wasn't fortunate enough to even graduate high school, man. Like I wasn't even able to be there a lot of the times. Be- I would miss so many days from right. just the hardship. So I, I look back on that a lot, and I'm like, damn, man, I wish I would have been able to. I wish I would have like high school and stuff. That's times that you never get again in life. Like you'll look back when you're younger or older. I mean, and be like, right. damn, like. That's a time period where you're not supposed to be worrying about none. You're not you just all you gotta do is go to school, get good grade. If you're in that situation, don't blow that. You know what I mean? Right. I was I I was not in that situation, wasn't able to do it out. My I was I if I'm at school, I'm worrying about it. If I got a home to go back to, all type of shit. So it's like I preach that like heavily. Like if you if you got the opportunity, man, enjoy that. It, be, grateful. be grateful, man. Live that life, enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like go ahead and do that shit. Take that opportunity. And, and then when college comes around, if, especially for high school, like do it. Don't drop out of that. You know, do do your thing. But when college rolls around, if it's for you, try it out. Do it. You know, if it's not, but if but if it's not, and you're like me, and he's like, bro, high school, yeah, but you know, whatever, then you don't have to. Though, mm-hmm. You know, like there's there's options out there. Don't let society make you feel like you have to, you know. But then you gotta well, one thing I always hear too is people are like that are in college, like, bro, it's just not for me. Like, yeah, I wanna do this other stuff, but really it's just masking laziness, honestly. Yeah, so yeah that's, that's another it. thing. That's gotta, that too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You're gonna have to do some searching and make sure that you're not like exactly you're not just, just saying like, like oh bro college ain't for it me it ain't for me because yeah, i don't no. feel like doing <laughs> homework <laughs> yeah. well i gotta read what like yeah, well i'd nah. rather make a beat like right. like don't be lazy can't with go it. half and half because like, you because you're gonna yeah. have to understand this taking that route of no school too at all it can be way 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 harder than what you think and if you so right. if you're if you're saying like oh i'm, I'm school ain't for me i'm cool like I'm good. I ain't trying to do all this work, bro. That else. entrepreneur right. from the ground up is this is a hustle, a right. nonstop hustle, innovating. You got to come constant. It's a constant hustle. So 
don't just think that's just gonna be like you know the grass ain't always easy. greener yeah. yeah and even though you're doing what you love and it's like well i'll be making beats but yeah but there's bro it's way more to this shit than just doing what you you know Mark it's not, everything. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be an entrepreneur in the Ain't next no year. Ain't no lazy period. Lazy shit rolling. gonna get you nowhere, <laughs> right. and in no matter what, you know. So yeah. if you might as well go ahead and get stay in school and help that get get the laziness out of your Hold system it. before right. you jump into the next shit. You know what I mean? Like mm. stay in school because that'll beat the laziness out of you, and then when by the time you're ready to get into it, you like, oh, this is I'm good. You know, I, I'm work. used to doing. I'm you know, I'm you know. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'd say though, like when you're young and you're just coming out of high school, realize that you have a lot of time to fail. Like, you know what I mean? True. If, if you if you if you're not sure, yeah, try it out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. especially nowadays you can get grants and yeah, all exactly. that stuff. You that's know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I was saying. You, you don't yeah. gotta have it all figured out by the yeah. time you're even like yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 25 man. and I still feel like, man, I could yeah. I could have just blew the whole last 10 years yeah. and start now. You could start still exactly. Be good, you know what it, I mean? It's never that's one, it's never too late. Like that's why I it's never too late for nothing. Period. Mm. Well, you know what I mean. Well, I I, I want, but you know what I mean, basically. Yeah. And though, on the, on the other flip side, though, time is the most valuable thing in the universe. Can't so buy time. You cannot buy time. No matter how rich you are, no matter how known, nobody in this planet can extend their their time or get this time back that's already spent. So even though you know you you got to keep in mind, it's like a double sided coin. You got to mm. keep in mind, like yeah, I'm still young. I, you don't want to stress everything, but you also got to keep in mind. Yo, the clock is still ticking. The clock is ticking. And that mm -hmm. motherfucker never stops. And it's like, it's up to you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know how many uh, ticks you still got left in your clock either. That's true. And I know for me, it's a big thing. Like, I've always wanted to, like, when I'm, like I say to my brother all the time, people all the time, when I'm gone from this planet, we all, we don't know when we're going to be gone. But when I'm gone, I want to be able to look down at the earth and be like, I did that shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, not and not even saying like, oh, it's got to be like, I bought out of it. It's just. I did things that I thought like I really wanted to chase. Some things didn't work out. Some things did. Don't matter, but I did it. Or when I'm older, not even gone, but when I'm old, I don't want to look back and be like, damn, I had this really good idea about this and that, but I didn't do it. What if I would have tried this? What if this? What if that? Like That'll those what ifs to kill you. Exactly. So it's like that time keeps ticking, never stops. So it's like you got to use it wisely. But at the same time, on the flip side, you got to realize, man, you know, Time's moving, but it's also like, don't let it, it'll kill you if you stress too much. You know, mm. just go with the, just go with the omens, follow the omens, do, do, put whatever it is you want to do. You got to realize what you want to do in life is step one, like, or at least the first thing, like, okay, the first step to like what I, what I want to achieve is I need to do this first. And then whatever that first thing is, you just do anything in your power to make that happen. You know, everybody, you know, not you ain't expected to just be able to flip a coin and bam, I made it happen. It might happen like that. But as long as you're taking steps towards that is what really matters. And whatever it is you can possibly do in your power at the moment, the universe will work with you and help you along that path. As I long like as that. you really working at it, though. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like if you want to open up a pizza shop and you like, I want to have the most lit. I want to bring Chicago pizza to Atlanta. I want shit to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you just sitting at home on Xbox talking to people on a party about it. Nah, bro, not gonna happen. But if you like, man, I really wanna do this. I don't got the money though. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Well, shit, what could I, what can I do? Well, maybe I might be able to try to set up a meeting. Maybe if I try to go talk to this dude about it, he might be, you know what I mean? Doing whatever you can do, that should have come together. And even if it doesn't happen that, like you, even if you set a plan, you're gonna learn so much just from pursuing it. Yep. And you might be like, okay, well, that didn't work, but shit, yep. there's new shit, you know what I mean? And that's what we were just talking about on the phone too. Also, something is along that way, you might be thinking this is what you want to do. You want to do this pizza shop, right? And this is everything to you. And along that way, you're learning this business and you're learning how to do this and how to do that. But then some other opportunity comes and it's something completely different, right? It ain't even got nothing to do with food. But somehow the universe is like, bam, no, what about this right here? Mm -hmm. And you can still apply all this stuff you learned. Mm -hmm. And then you off to some whole different thing. And you had no idea that that's what, like I started off as an artist rapping. You know what I mean? That's how I passionately got into music. And I'm completely, I mean, I still like write and all that, but I'm not, you know, like, and that's kind of still similar, but there's people, they start off like, like I was saying, like, you could be like, say, you know, your girl, you want to be a model and you're like, oh, I want to be a model. I want to be and cover these magazines, whatever. You go to a little photo shoot, somebody, they're interviewing you. They're like, okay, so, you know, what is your best features? Da, da, da. And, and she talks and they're like, somebody over here in the corner, they're on their computer. They're not even with them. And they're like, yo, you have the most beautiful voice I've ever heard in my life. Like, 
I want you to be on this radio show. You should have your own show just from that voice. Like you just never know. And that's completely different, but that could be what you just never know. You know what I mean? But as long as you following some type of footsteps, you know, and and trying to put in, put it in that work, some shit will connect for you, period. It might take longer than some people, but it's going to happen, period. Mm. But not if you just lacking, you got to really be doing everything you can. Most definitely. Yeah. So before we get out of here, man, um, Shout out, uh, let people know where they can tune in. and uh, Man, main thing I would say is follow my Instagram, at Superstar O. That is lit as fuck over there. We <laughs> always coming up with new cool <laughs> shit. It'll have you motivated. It'll have you on the grind. It's just a good place to be. You know what I mean? But that's that's where everything, you come to the Instagram, that's where everything is. Industrykiss.com. If you're a fellow music producer, you know, listen and you don't know about it somehow, you under like a Squidward Rock. That's where you want to be, baby. Patrick, you need some BST. Patrick, Patrick you're right, Patrick. You, Patrick. you you right. Correct. You, you right. You right. If you Patrick over there under a rock, you know, you need some BSTs. You need anything. We got you on industrykiss.com. But as far as just to just to keep up to date, you know, with me and see what's going on, Instagram. I'm always on there. Always keeping it going. Most definitely, Ooh, man. At Superstar. Appreciate you pulling up, bro. Oh, it ain't no problem. Dropping a lot Thank of gems, man, me. for real. Right. Oh, I appreciate it. Right. Ain't no problem. Already, bro. Yes, sir. Another dope episode of Producer Grind Podcast, man. Signing up. Peace. Peace.